Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here. And for today's SolidWorks step-by-step -step tutorial, we're gonna construct this model. And even though the feature tree looks pretty simple in this model, you're probably gonna get 20 or 30 time-saving tips and tricks out of this demonstration. So grab your notepad, grab your pencil, let's get into it here. And this challenge is going to come from the Too Tall Toby website, twotalltoby.com, from our practice models app. So you can see here right in the middle of the page, get started with free practice models. And you can see here that we've got a repository of over 100 2D to 3D challenges. Can you take a 2D drawing and turn it into a 3D model and calculate the correct mass of that model? And so we've got about 20 challenges on here that are free for any Too Tall Toby members. And then if you really like the app, you can sign up here for our premium membership and get access to the entire library. Well, one of those free challenges is this one here, 24-01-10. So I'm gonna say click here to practice. And we can see here that there have been 514 people who have completed this model successfully. So let's see if we can become number 515. So this is a tier four challenge. The skills tested are symmetry. There's probably some other skills that are tested in this thing. Let's click here to begin. And here we go. We are ready to do this thing. We're gonna say reveal drawing. And boom, we are in this thing and we are ready to go. The clock is running. So the question is, what is the mass of this part in XXX grams? And once we calculate that mass, we're gonna enter it here in this field. But before we get started with a challenge like this, I always like to kind of come up with a game plan. So let's take a look at this drawing here. And one of the first things that I ask myself is where should the origin be located on this model? And I think that the answer to that question is gonna be the origin will be somewhere along the line of symmetry. So it's going to be somewhere along this plane. Let's call this the front plane of the model. And so then the question becomes, where should the origin be here on this view? And I think that maybe this lower corner here makes sense. We've got several dimensions that are coming from that lower corner. So that's probably a good spot for the origin. Now, as far as our first sketch for this model, our first sketch is going to be created on that front plane. And it's probably going to look something like this. We'll have this line coming down here, line coming over, up, over, up up, probably some kind of a shape like that. And then we can extrude that geometry out to this depth of 85, and then we can kind of round off the front of that shape. Then we can create this little tombstone shape here that's gonna be extruded up. And then after we're done with those bosses, we can move on and start creating our cuts. So we'll create a cut here for this shape to kind of clear out that tombstone shape. We can maybe then get in and start making our holes. So we've got these holes here that are counter bores. They're five millimeters through, 10 millimeter counter bore by five millimeters deep. And then we've got another counter bore up here on this view, 15 millimeters through 30 uh, counter bore with a depth of 12 millimeters. And then I think we could finish up by creating these fillets here out on these corners. So that should cover all the features of this model. I know we took a couple of minutes to come up with a game plan, but I think it's really important whenever you're 3D modeling to just take your time and come up with a game plan before you get started. And if you agree, then be sure to hit that like button. And with that, let's jump into this challenge. Let me flip over so we can see the clock here, so we can see the drawing. And let me move this over to my second screen. So the first thing I'm gonna do to save time is I'm gonna work with templates. I'm gonna choose new here, and I'm gonna choose a SolidWorks template that's already set up in millimeters and that's already set up in ABS. So I'm using the material that's on the title block. I'm using the unit system on the title block, MMGS and ABS. And so now to stick with my plan, I'm gonna go to the front plane. I'm gonna begin a sketch on the front plane and I'm gonna create that shape that was in that lower left view. But here's where we're gonna start really saving time by using some SolidWorks functionality, namely the auto dimension functionality in sketch mode. So you'll notice here if I go to options and I go down here to sketch, these two options here are checked on, enable on-screen numeric input and create dimension only when a value is entered. Well, if you have those options turned on in sketch here in your options, then you're gonna be able to utilize auto dimensioning. And so for this first sketch, what I can do is I can press the S key on my keyboard, launch the line command, and then what I can do is click on this point here, move my mouse over, let go of my mouse, and I can type in 135, enter. Move my mouse straight up, let go of my mouse, I can type in 12, enter move my mouse over this way, let go of my mouse, and now here I could type in 135 minus 25. 
Kind of cool, right? To get that that 110 distance. Here I could go up in this direction and I can say, I want this dimension to be 65 minus 12. And that gives me that height dimension. And now the final thing I have to do is just draw this line here that comes down and then this final line over to here. And so that's kind of a cool way that you can use auto dimensions. Now for some of these, what you can then do is you could take this, this line here and you could just grab this dimension grip and drag it down to the bottom. You know, the customer is asking for that to be 65. So we want to match what the customer says. But if you learn how to use these dimension grips, you can kind of drag these around to get these dimensions in the right spot. Now, this doesn't always work. For example, this 110 dimension, if I try to drag this one over, I'm probably just going to get a linear dimension. Let's see. Oh, we were able to do it. Sweet. Drag that one over as well. Cool. We're learning on the fly. So now we've got all those dimensions the same way that the customer asked for them. Now, the other tip that we can take from this first sketching example here is the use of the magic dimension angle arrow handle. And what that means is when you launch the smart dimension command, if you click on a line, and then you click the end point of that line, you get this little four-way magic dimension arrow handle here. And what you can do with this handle is you can click on this arrow here, and that will give you kind of an imaginary vertical line. And then you'll get an angle dimension between these two entities here. So what that means is if I click on that, that vertical arrow, I can then move up here and put in my angle dimension without having to go in and sketch a little construction line or something like that. So again, the way that workflow works is you launch the smart dimension command and then you click on this line and then you click down here on this end point and then you move your mouse up and you click on that little arrow and look at that. Now we can create an angle dimension of 15. This is a pretty cool way to save time when you're working in sketch mode, learning how to auto dimension and learning how to use that magic dimension arrow handle. And so now I've got that geometry created. I'm going to jump into my extrude command. Now I've customized my S key in SolidWorks, another huge time saver. I'll include a link to a video up there where it'll explain how to customize your S key. But one of the things I always do is I add the extrude command right onto my sh sketching shortcut menu. So when I'm in sketch mode, I press S jump right into the extrude command, and then I can let go of my mouse and I can type in the depth of that extrusion, 85, enter, and then I'm just gonna move my mouse around in the background and I'm gonna right mouse button and I'm gonna choose mid plane. So I'm using two shortcuts there. Um, you know, really I'm using three shortcuts. I'm pressing the S key to jump right into the extrude command. Then I'm immediately typing in the depth of the extrusion because the extrusion is set to blind. So S key, extrude, and then I'm letting go of my mouse, immediately typing in the depth, 85, enter. And then I'm taking my hand back over to my mouse and I'm just moving to the background, right mouse button, choose mid plane. And then I'm going to right mouse button again to finish out that command. So this is another really good workflow to learn to kind of speed through your extrusions. So now I'm going to select this face here, begin a sketch. I'm going to orient my view with control eight. And then what I'm going to do is choose the S key to create an arc. And this arc is going to go from here to here and then I'm going to go in this direction and I'm going to let go of my mouse and immediately type in the radius. So you can remember that that auto dimensioning works in a lot of different spots and it can really save you that extra step of having to launch the dimension command. So now I'm going to press escape and I'm going to click on this arc here. I'm going to hold control and click on this line. I'm going to let go of control and then I'm going to move up here to this context bar and I'm going to choose make tangent. So that's another shortcut when you're working in sketch mode. Learn that here I'll control Z here for undo. Learn that if you just pick one, hold control, pick the other, and then let go of control, the sketch relationship shows up here in this context bar. So make tangent, boom, there we go. And now this thing looks like it should be fully defined. I'm not sure why it's not. So I'm just going to grab a blue point and move it around. Okay, these two points should probably be vertical to one another. So again, pick this point, hold control, whoops, pick this point, hold control, pick this point here, let go of control, vertical and now we see that sketch is fully defined now currently the sketch is simply a single arc well if i press the s key and i jump into the cut extrude command from a single arc i can then choose the end condition of through all both so either here from this flyout menu or again just right mouse button in the background right mouse button through all both directions and now what I'm doing is basically a surface cut. I'm taking that arc and I'm cutting infinitely in both directions. And I'm either going to remove what's on this side of the gray arrow, or if I click on it, what's on this side of the gray arrow. So I want to remove what's on this side of the gray arrow here. I hit the green check mark and 
Look at that. That is a pretty nice time saver. I didn't have to sketch that that extra geometry. You know, a lot of times you think you have to sketch something like this. No, you don't have to do that. Just make the arc and then cut extrude through all both. And then all you have to do is flip side to cut. So now I'm going to create that tombstone shape. And again, we're going to use auto dimensions to save time. I'm going to pick this face, begin a sketch, orient my view with control eight. And then I'm going to S key. I'm going to begin the line command, single click here, I'm going to move away. And I'm going to, the, the location of this arc is concentric to this arc out here. So this, this new arc that I'm about to sketch is going to be concentric to this arc here. The center point will be concentric to this arc here. So I'm just going to, uh, after I create that line, I'll just kind of drop it wherever. I'm going to move away from that endpoint. Now, without clicking anything, I'm just going to hold my mouse over that endpoint. And then I can come off of that and I can, I can see here that the uh, radius of this arc is going to be, so again, using auto dimensions, the radius is going to be 26, enter. And then I can continue dragging this arc here so the end point is vertical to the original point single click move my mouse down this way single click move my mouse over here single click then i can press escape pick this arc hold control pick this arc let go of control and make concentric and look at that that sketch is fully defined just in those few steps so really really good use of auto dimension there good workflow to learn learn how to sketch those tombstone shapes we use those all the time in mechanical engineering when you're making a lug or a notch out you're you're always making those tombstone shapes so take some time and really practice that workflow so you're comfortable making that tombstone shape in one pass so now i'm going to press the s key i'm going to jump into extrude and again we can see here that the depth of the extrusion the end condition is set to blind so without even changing the view and and without doing anything with my mouse i can just let go of my mouse and start typing in the depth of this extrusion so it'll look something like this i'm going to press escape so now I'm back in the sketch. I'm back in the sketch here. S key, extrude, let go of the mouse, nine, enter, enter. Look at that. There's an extrusion. And if I roll my view, I can see that that extrusion is, in fact, going in the correct direction. So whatever you're extruding off of an existing face, it's always going to come up away from the face. It's not going to extrude down into the face, even if it was overlapping out here, which, you know, in that case, it would actually we would need to reverse direction. But by default, if I sketched on this face here, the extrusion is going to come up away from the face. So that's a good shortcut to remember uh, when you begin the extrude command, just type in the depth, enter, enter. So now I'm going to create another sketch here. This face, select a face, begin a sketch, orient my view, control eight to orient that view. And now I'm going to do another tombstone shape, but this time I do have a dimension for the length of the tombstone. So S key, line, single click this upper edge, move my mouse down, let go of my mouse, type in that distance, 20, enter move my mouse away from that endpoint, come back and hold my mouse over the endpoint, come away from that endpoint, let go of my mouse, type in the radius, 15, enter, continue moving my mouse till I'm at 180 degrees, single click, move my mouse up here, single click, move my mouse over here, single click. And now all I have to do is press escape, pick this point, hold control, pick this point down here, let go of control and choose vertical. And look at that, a nice fully defined sketch. So now that I've got that nice fully defined sketch, I can choose uh, the, uh, the S key, extrude cut. And then again, I can right mouse button in the background, right mouse button, and I can choose the end condition. We did this earlier and we chose mid plane, but this time we're gonna choose through all. So through all, right mouse button to finish. And look at that, that looks beautiful. There is our cut extrude. And so now we can finish this thing off by adding in some hole wizard holes in those fillets. Now, a little trick that I like to use with those hole wizard holes is sometimes I'll lay, that, lay out the location ahead of time. And in the case of this model, it's gonna be really easy. I'm gonna pick this face, begin a sketch, orient my view, S key, and I'm gonna choose a center point rectangle. And that center point rectangle is gonna have the auto dimensions of 10, enter, 55, enter. And then I'm gonna press escape. I'm gonna choose this line here, hold control, choose this line here, make those collinear. Let go of control, make those collinear. And then this point here, hold control, pick the origin, let go of control, vertical. And now what I've done is I've set myself up with a perfect layout sketch for those points. So I'll just exit that sketch. So it's just kind of hanging out here in the background. And now I'm gonna launch the whole wizard command 
whole wizard, and I'm going to say that the whole wizard is going to use the counter bore option for whole wizard. So make sure you use the correct hole type. And then what I usually do with the whole wizard command is I come down here and I hit this check mark that says show custom sizing. And that way I can just look at the drawing and then just type in the dimensions that are on the drawing. So on the drawing, I can see that these holes are five millimeters through. I'll press the tab key on my keyboard. These holes are 10 millimeter counterbore diameter tab and then five millimeter depth for that tab. And uh, then I can click here where it says positions. And for the positions, I'm going to click this face. So I begin a new 2D sketch on this face. And then all I need to do is just click this point and click this point. And boom, I'm done with those counter bores. Pretty slick, right? You don't have to do that. You can certainly just dimension those. You could even make the rectangle in that, in that whole wizard sketch. But I think that's kind of a cool way to just lay it out ahead of time. And then when you're done, you can hide that sketch. Nice and easy way to get those dimensions uh, the way that they're shown on the drawing. Now for this next counter bore, I don't have to do any dimensions because it's just going to be concentric here. Last time what I did was I launched the counter bore command, the whole wizard command, before selecting a face. You could also pre-select a face and then choose whole wizard. It just kind of saves you that click when you're in the command, but it does the same thing. So you could pre-select it or with nothing selected, you could choose whole wizard. Then you could choose your, your whole wizard type counter bore. Come down here to your custom sizing. This one is going to be 15 tab. 30, tab, 12, tab. Then we go to positions, and then we single click on this face to, to activate a 2D sketch on that face. And then we hold our mouse over this arc here to wake up the center point. So you just kind of hold your mouse over this arc or kind of jiggle it around here near this arc. You see the center point wakes up. You move your mouse to that center point, single click, and now we're done. We could right mouse button to finish or hit the green check mark up in the corner. I like to use the right mouse button when it shows up here on the screen. So right mouse button to finish, and there we go. There's that whole wizard hole. And now the final feature is just the fillets. So here in the background, I'll press S, launch the fillet command, and then I'm going to type in the fillet radius here of 20, enter, and then I'm going to choose this edge here and this edge here. If you're just getting into SolidWorks, make sure that you've got full preview turned on when you're doing this, full preview turned on. So the 20 millimeter fillet there, I'm going to hit the green check mark, and now I'm going to go up into my tree, sensors, and we can see here that we've got a sensor. Let's do a control Q for rebuild, control Q, and we're coming up with a mass here of 204 grams, 204 grams. So I'm going to come over here to my mass input window, 204, and enter. And oh yeah, anytime you see that purple box, that's usually an indication or is an indication that you got it correct. So it says, congratulations, this answer is correct. We did it. We got the right answer on this one. So congratulations, this answer is correct. And if we choose submit, we're going to get one point on the community scoreboard. Let's do it submit and boom we did it so now 515 people have completed this model so it looks like once you finish these challenges on the the app you can scroll down here and then you can see what the average time is so the average time for this model was 11 minutes and 52 seconds my time for this model was 15 minutes and 56 seconds so maybe at some point i'll come back in here and i'll choose try again maybe i can use some of those skills that i learned during this tutorial and i could actually get a little bit faster i can try and get down underneath that average time of 11 minutes and 52 seconds but for now i'm just happy that i finished the model that i got it correct and if you're able to get through that model and finish it and get it correct good job Give yourself a pat on the back. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, if you learned some tips and tricks, be sure to like this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Let me know down in the comments what you learned from this video, if I, if I helped you uncover something new that you haven't used before. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing everybody down in the comments and I'll look forward to seeing everybody in the next video.